I'm Paula Asher, Distance Learning and Instructional Technology Coordinator at Columbia Gorge Community College. Today my avatar, Rupi Soul, is exploring the Oregon Community College's island in Second Life. The island was developed during the 2008-2009 school year by a team of instructional technologists and faculty from community colleges across the state. Through a grant from the Oregon Community Colleges and Workforce Development Department. The 2009 2010 school year is a pilot year for student involvement on the island. So I'm hoping to interview some community college students and faculty to get their feedback. First, let's talk to one of the island's developers, Monica Martinez Gallagher at Portland Community College. Monica, could you describe this island to us? Sure. So Oregon Community College's island is a space where all 17 of our community colleges can come into the virtual world of Second Life and share uh, not just a space where we can all coalesce what we're finding out, but really a place where we can maybe build better professional development bonds with one another and really start to uh, think more from a group mentality about some of these uh, greater technical issues that we might face going into virtual spaces for teaching and learning. I'm speaking now with Bill Noonan, who is a philosophy instructor at Columbia Gorge Community College, and we're here with his avatar, Bill Lamplight. And Bill, could you, um, first of all, describe your avatar and also tell us a little bit about the story of how you're using this technology with students and what kind of advantage you're seeing uh, with teaching in in Second Life? Well, uh, my avatar is kind of a buffed out Socrates in real life. Uh, Socrates would say was just a little on the ugly side. So here in Second Life, he gets a, a new chance to be looking a little firmer and trimmer. The um, Second Life here is offering an opportunity for me to create literally an experience for the students to um, come to know philosophers in a number of ways. One is we start in Plato's cave, which it's an allegory about how one moves from ignorance to enlightenment, from darkness to light. So they literally have the experience of starting out in darkness through the virtual, experiencing the virtual reality of the cave, and then come to the light of this garden here. And in the garden, there are six philosophers, and according to Plato, one, the way one came to enlightenment was through the study of philosophy. And so here the students are getting the experience of reading small selections from six philosophers. And their reading is contextualized by literally um, experiencing the, some of the objects from these philosophers' lives, their homes, their houses, various symbolic ob you know, objects that represent uh, uh, their lives. So the technology has really been one that has created this just terrific opportunity to create an environment to read philosophy. Eric Green is an instructor at Columbia Gorge Community College. This fall, his students are using Second Life for group work using text chat, which is one of the standard features of virtual environments. Can you describe how you use this feature, Eric? One advantage of using Second Life is that in the various group discussions that are going on right now, I'll be able to get a transcript of the discussions. Uh, we have three or four groups going right now, each with three to five individuals. I can't possibly monitor those discussions and uh, or be in those separate places simultaneously. Uh, but after the groups are done and they give me their transcript, I'll be able to put that into an Excel spreadsheet, actually sort it out by individual, come up with average number of contributions, and quickly skim the contributions by each member of each group uh, to come up with an evaluation and a grade for every student. Do you have any advice for other instructors? Physically, the way I set this up was groups of three to five, a mixed gender. I find that more than five, uh, the discussion is bogged down. Under three, uh, you lose the group dynamics. Uh, mixing genders seems to be good. Um, 
physically I keep the students separated so that they can't just reach over and start whispering to one another in the same group. Uh, and also, uh, because this is Second Life, it's not necessary that the students be in the classroom. Uh, that works out just fine as long as they've got a high-speed connection. Uh, it doesn't really matter where they are. And I see that probably as one of the really big future advantages to Second Life. Today there are a couple of community college student groups on the island, and I'd like to interview them via their avatars to see what they think about their experiences on the island. So in your computer applications class, uh, you and your fellow students are, are meeting here on the island in Second Life. Can you describe how that works? How is that a part of your class? Well, we have group projects that we have to do together where we talk about different um, things to do with web design and we go online and research things and we chat on, we type our chat in so that we can upload it later to our teacher. But we get divided into different groups from different parts of the room and although we could probably hear each other if we just spoke, it's kind of fun to do it in Second Life. You have an avatar, you can see each other talking and it's just kind of a more interactive way to meet and it's kind of fun and interesting. So Othniel, you uh, were in the cave and was it or experienced the the being inside the cave as an avatar and then took a quiz and landed in the light here in the garden do you think that the experience of being in the cave helped you understand plato's allegory uh definitely um when, when you're in the cave it's kind of like a dark dingy musty uh kind of feeling of pressure you're just like i don't really want to be here you're closed there's no way to get out and uh Interestingly enough, I didn't actually know the allegory of the cave before I entered the cave uh, that particular class period. And uh, I was like, what are these people sitting on the floor with things around their neck, <laughs> like looking at a wall? And I didn't understand it because I hadn't read the, uh, the allegory yet. And then when I was in there, I read it and I was like, ah, oh, like the light turned on and it made complete sense. And you got to walk around it and you could imagine the shadows being cast upon the wall. And uh, so it was very visual. It was good. It was cool. Could you describe in a little bit more detail some of the interesting things that have happened to you, some perhaps some positive or surprising aspects of working in Second Life in, for your philosophy class? Well, it's pretty interesting to be a student and a cartoon character all at once. That's been pretty fun. And uh, I like my toga. And then the garden is a beautiful, beautiful place, and it actually has quite a peaceful feel to it. So to walk around here and actually simulate being able to visit with the philosophers it is uh, quite exciting. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the Oregon Community College's island in Second Life. You're welcome to visit us anytime. You might find me here in the treehouse. <laughs>